Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome again to Preparation Day and the Telford Muse Prophecy Conference. As we go back into our study, shall, shall we ask our Heavenly Father for His blessing and His guidance as we open His Word and we study it in conjunction with history? Shall we pray? Gracious Father in Heaven, we thank you for the many blessings that you have been providing, for the opportunity that we have to open your word, to look upon symbols that you have provided for us, so that we may more clearly understand the position that we are in this earth's history. We ask, Father, for your blessing upon this study. We ask your direction we ask that your angels attend us and that your spirit will help our minds to be open to receiving that which you would have us to know. Hide me behind your cross, Father. May it be your words, your examples that are shown to all. Do what is necessary so that your character is glorified. Be with us now. Direct us, we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, yesterday we were addressing several points of history because over the last 40 odd years there have been many attacks upon the understanding of the 2300 days Daniel 8 gives us two major visions one vision concerning the daily and the transgression of desolation and one vision that is true. Now if something is true, it can be trusted. If something is true, it means that it is correct. When we look at history, when we look at all the way marks that are presented, we should be able to affix in our minds different points that show us how this history has implications for our time. Now, as we were addressing yesterday, in 317 BC, Ptolemy the first Soter chose to enter into a league. He chose to enter into a marriage with a woman that was his wife's lady in waiting. And it is from that union that many of the other Ptolemies were born. Now, this type of union, this type of league, we have seen denominated as the number 158. So at this point, One five eight is something that we need to affix in our minds because we may see this symbol occurring over and over again. Now, the reason that I have drawn out a line like this is that there are several points from history for us to consider. Some of these points may be very valid. Some of these points may not, 
This is going to be for an open discussion. When you have questions, please feel free either by the chat or from the Zoom to give your questions. Now I found it very interesting when I am studying this line that in 254 BC there was a major battle and this battle was the Romans against the Macedonian forces. So Rome is beginning to enter into the vision of history at this time. What I found interesting about this battle was that it occurred 63 years after Ptolemy I Soter entered into this league with Bernice. This battle, called the Battle of Baisalora, took place near an area that is called I may not have spelled it properly, but Civiti Nicolae. Now, to us that speak English, this doesn't have a lot of impact. But if we translate this into English, this battle took place near a city that is called St. Nicholas. Now, this is one of those battles where Rome was flexing its muscles. Rome sought to understand its position and sought to establish itself as a world dominant power. Now, as we talk to the next step here, We have 190, excuse me? Okay. The next, the next point that we have of history here is 191 BC. We established this yesterday as the midpoint between two periods of midnight. This is where Rome establishes its dominance because Rome defeats Greece at Thermopylae. Now at this, at this moment, Rome is now beginning its greater ascendancy. Greece, as we see here, the winged leopard or the goat with the single great horn or the goat with the four horns has now begun to fall here to the beast of pagan Rome. But this pattern continues. We have another period of 63 years. Now, in the midst of this, between 191 and the next way mark, we have the children of Israel seeking a league 
with Rome. Now, whether this league takes place in 161 or in 158, as it shows in the chart, we may address the fact that in this we will use the 158 again and again as our example of the symbol, especially a symbol of a league that we are not to enter in with. Why is it important that the children of Israel not enter into a league with Rome? It's interfaithing is correct. But is it also not something that God commanded should not occur? And the first time they did it was 1,335 years before 158. Right. Okay, we're going to have that repeated for the, for the uh, recording. Yeah, so we had discovered that that league that they made with... Um, uh, trying to think of their names. The ones who had traveled a long distance, or at least they made it appear that they had. Right. Um, that that league that Joshua made, it was uh, 1,335 years before the league in 158. Gibeonites. Right? What? Um, Gibeonites. Gibeonites, yes. Okay. So in the book of Joshua, we have people that travel portending to come from a long distance. They seek to enter into a league. And they are not truthful. As we were saying here, 13, 1,335 years before 158, which if you have your calculator is in what year? So in 1493, we have this symbol occurring. Now, does 1335 mean anything to us? Here. On the chart, we have 1335 from Daniel 12.11. Here, from the book of Joshua, and from what we've understood from our study of history, we have 1335. Here, taking away of the daily in 508, we also have 1335 being applied to it. So over and over again, we are seeing that 1335 as a symbol is being repeated. And it's something that we need to understand. And we know, of course, that uh, Miller connects 158 to uh, five, um, 508. Yes. And that's going to be 666 years. Yes. Now, of course, it ends up being uh, an inclusive count yes. rather than a cardinal count because he didn't take into account there was no zero year. But it still be is part of that structure. And there's other parts of these structures of the 1335 and... Uh, the 666, but we know, of course, the 1335 is going to be counted from 508 to 1843. Now, so you're going to have 1335, 158 BC, then 666 years, then 1335 again. Yeah, if you add 1335 plus 666, you get 2001. So, so these, these are very profound things 
from from scripture of symbols now daniel 12:12 12, 12. please turn in your bibles with me to daniel 12:12 12, 12. The 12th Dan chapter of Daniel has a lot of admonitions for us at this time. But this is something I wish for all of us to consider. So when you're at Daniel 12, 12, if you will please say amen. Okay. As it reads, Blessed is he that waiteth, and cometh to the thousand three hundred five and thirty days. So in this portion of Daniel, those that come to the thirteen thirty five are to be blessed. Now the way that the chart presents this and presents it properly. Those that come to the 1335 after the taking away of the daily would have been brought to 1843. But we are looking for the blessing today. We are looking for the understanding so that we may more clearly understand what we need to know here today. So, <clears throat> the next situation that we're going to look at is going to be 128 BC. Again, a period of 63 years. In 128 BC, Judah seeks their independence. They seek to reassert themselves as being an independent nation. Now, here, as we were addressing, in between 191 and 128, we have this league. Now they're seeking to set aside the league with Rome. So 128 BC would be 666 inclusive years to 538. Okay. Now, isn't that interesting? No, I had... Um, in the past, I had 129 B.C. for the Judean independence, mm -hmm. which was 666 cardinal years to, right. to that. But you could just use inclusive and, you know, cardinal. They're still going to be giving you the same same, the same result. Yeah. Now, next... We would come to 65 BC. In 65 BC, the Roman general Pompey comes to battle against Syria, and they make a league with Syria that they will now be part of the Roman Empire, that now we will defend you as we are defending all others. So, <clears throat> again, Rome begins to assert its, do its dominance. As we have come to understand, a nation becomes world dominant 
when it conquers three geographical areas. In this time period, did they have to conquer the Promised Land? The Promised Land sought to be united with Rome. Here at Thermopylae, Rome had established its dominance over Greece. Here in 65 BC, they have established their dominance over Syria. So by 65 BC, Rome is now the nation in power over the world. Now, are you noting any kind of a pattern here? One twenty six, one twenty six. We keep taking this all the way down, and we're seeing one twenty six occurring. But how do we come to sixty three? Simple math nine times seven. Again, we have symbols showing us different portions that are going on in this history. And of course, uh, 126 is 18 times 7. 18 times 7? Is 126. Okay. The July 18th symbol. So, yeah. again, when we have 126, we also have 126. How many times do we need these symbols to be repeated? How many times can we be shown that our Heavenly Father is saying to those that are studying, pay attention. I am coming. I am coming to claim my own. So if we now have had a period of 63 years here and here and here and here, What's our next time period going to be? Here we have 63 years. And I think we could also come down here and say with certainty that we can look at 63 years. Here we have 2 BC. Now, in this, in 2 BC, who is on the throne in Jerusalem? Herod the Great, right? Bless you. Now, can I prove this point? No, but is this point likely? Yes. To BC, possibly, very likely, Jesus goes to Egypt. Now, it is said in the scriptures that my son will come out of Egypt. We know that Herod was seeking to kill all children within a specific age range. Yet, two children were not killed of that age range that we know of. And what two children were those? Jesus for one, 
John the Baptist for the second. Now, did John live in that area? Wasn't John, wasn't John of a priestly family? Do we not know? I mean, do we have any evidence that John's well, parents left with him? No. So it's possible that he's not in the right age range because he's six months older than Jesus. That would be interesting. So for how old did the children... How, what was well, it the, says two years old and under. Okay. So in 2 BC, uh, John would be older than 2. Okay. So that's why. That's possible. Yeah, but that would be one of the arguments for, um, you know, the dating of the age of Jesus and, and etc. I mean, I'd have to look at it a bit more, but he would just be too old. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, sorry. Okay. Yeah, I'm not too sure where. I'm not too sure where Zachary. Well. With Elizabeth, I think it was in the hill country of Judea. Right. So, he did minister. In Jerusalem. Right. At the temple on occasions. So he may not been in that Bethlehem area. Okay. Okay, that, that, that is a good point. Okay. So at this point... We can definitely say two children that were sought to be killed would have been Jesus and Moses. I was making the, I was making the application with John because of his age being about that of six months within that of Christ. So if I'm incorrect, I apologize. Now, sixty-three years after. Two BCs. We would come to 62 AD. Do we have any event occurring in 62 AD that we note from the Bible? James was executed by the high priest Ananias in 62. So in all of these, we have multiple periods of 126 years. All of these being multiples of 18 by 7. Step by step by step in this time frame, which is all part of the 2,300 evening mornings, we have these occurrences going on. We can tie in other symbols we can show that we are not to enter into a league as the children of Israel did with the Gibeonites. We are not to enter into a league as the children of Israel did with Rome. We are to consider ourselves as a peculiar people. A people devoted unto God. So
So are we to engage in study as others would do? What, what rules are we to use for our studies? Is it not Miller's rules? Are we not to take the Bible alone as our rule of faith? Sola Scriptura. Now, all of these symbols have been occurring over and over again and being repeated for us. How many times do we need these repeated before we finally start to really wake up to understand them? Now, Any questions of what I've put on the board? through this yesterday we have the rebuilding of Jerusalem that begins with the third decree why is it important that we note the third decree can we not tie these decrees out to the first second third angels messages and the message of the fourth angel in doing this we have looked that within seven sevens As the scripture would read, streets and walls rebuilt even in troublous times. We have here a cycle of seven sevens allowing the land its rest. And we have witnesses from history that when the Jews returned to Palestine, they began again allowing the land to rest because they understood what their sin had been during the time of Saul, David, and Solomon. Here, we have a period of one seven and in this period of one seven we have the Messiah being cut off but not for himself but this being the final week of the message to the children of Israel. We have established that this is a period of 490 years. As we addressed yesterday, 490 years is a symbol of a probationary time. Now we have just addressed and linked 158 and 1335. 
now we have 490. Is it possible that we're going to be able to link a symbol of 158 with 490? Consider that as we consider our studies today. Here, as we stated, we have 191. Now, whether we're dealing with 191 or we are dealing with 119 or we are dealing with 911, we address that we were looking at the same symbols. And we addressed 217 as being the symbol for midnight. All of this is involved in the study of this week of Christ. These symbols, as we walk through, we will find many of them on both the 1843 and the 1850 charts. Now there's something else for us to think about. This is something that I know I cannot prove from the Bible. But it is something that is possible. And to, from this, I have to thank Theodore, because this came in a conversation that we had, what, probably two years ago? When we are looking at this, in this time frame, in the week of Christ, We can look at this where in 27 AD, Jesus was baptized. Now, if this is, if this is correct, we would be looking at the 10th day of the 7th month. Which on the biblical calendar should be the 30th of September. We know that the crucifixion occurred on the 14th day of the first month, which again, if we are looking at this, would have been 27th of April, and then if this is correct, then the stoning of Stephen would have again occurred here on the 10th day of the 7th month. And these are just using the assumption because we have from Ezra 
uh, 7 to 10, chapter 7 to 10, that structure where we have the 10th day of the 7th month as the center of a chiasm. Right. And since the 2300 days end on the 10th day of the 7th month and begin on the 10th day of the 7th month and the 70 weeks commence on the same period. Right. And the stoning of Stephen, he sees, St Stephen sees um, uh, Jesus standing on the right hand of God, standing, not sitting. Right. So this would show Michael standing. So it's the close of probation and that that would occur on the 10th day of the seventh month. Correct. So then we assume then the baptism occurs seven years earlier to the day. So that's why we have the 10th day of the seventh month. Right. Now... All of this taking place would have encountered in using the tools that have been presented this week for a, to a total of 2,569 days. An in inclusive count of 2,570. So it's it, but that would be the cardinal count from September 30th, 27 AD, to October 12th, uh, 34 right. AD. So that's just a cardinal count. So it's, you could look at it either way. Right. But when we look at this in this manner, we would have 2,520 plus 49. Seven times plus seven sevens. Here, if we are doing the inclusive count, we would have 2,520 plus 50, which would include a jubilee. Well, in a technical sense, this would be um, the Feast of Weeks. Yes. In a technical sense, this would be the Feast of Weeks. Now, in all of these situations, with this in the week of Christ, we have symbols before us. We know that Christ was crucified when he was ordained to be crucified, when it was stated he would be crucified. He is our Passover lamb. All of these numbers, all of these symbols are coming together during this week to tell us where we are at now. Now, one of the comments that was made yesterday, and I, I may need some help with this, please. But I found this very, very interesting. As it centers here on 191. From 191 BC, we have a span. That brings us to 1989. Is that correct? Brings us to 1,989 years. Brings us to 1798. Now, is there anything relevant for us to recognize in 1798? That is the beginning of the time of the end. 
So here we have 1798. We have 1798 when Berthier takes the Pope captive. Okay. Thank you. Now, from 1798 here, if we go 191 years, what do we come to? So all of these symbols, again, are being presented for us to learn. They're being presented for us to recognize. We're being asked to apply them so that we may be able to give a message as to where we stand today. Nineteen eighty nine was when the Ministry of Future for America began. Thirty years after this, I believe we have accepted was the same type of time period, the same symbol, as to when the priests would begin their ministration. We are in a time, brothers and sisters, where there is a great number of symbols being assembled, being presented, being shown that we need to recognize. All of this is being tied with biblical history. In the study yesterday from the book of Judges, there was a verse that we were reading. Abimelech was not recognized as one of Gideon's sons, right? He was recognized as being the son of a harlot. Yet Abimelech chose to take control and take power. And what did he do to the sons of Gideon? Well, he killed. Right? He killed the sons of Gideon, the 70 sons, except one. Correct. Now, when we look at this, As we looked at Judges chapter 9, we find in Judges 9 verse 5, if you'd turn there with me please, so that's Judges 
we have the following verse. And he, and Abimelech, went in unto his father's house in Ophrah, and slew his brethren, the sons of Jerubal, being threescore and ten persons, upon one stone. Notwithstanding yet Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubal, was left, for he had hid himself. What stone was it that Abimelech slew his brethren upon? What symbol can we take from that stone? Well, it would represent the Christ. It would represent Christ, yes. So these 70... Seven by ten were slain upon one stone. How many more times do we need to have the number seven or seven sevens brought before us before we recognize that our Heavenly Father is saying to us this number is important? Now, do we have any other questions or comments from what we've been covering? I know this, this has gone quite a range. Any other thoughts? Okay, if there are no, no other comments or thoughts, shall we close with prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many way marks that you have placed before us. We thank you for the opportunity that we've had to study and for bringing us to this time in earth's history. Direct us now and through this day. Bless the speakers that will come before us. Help our minds to be open so we may be able to recognize more from the symbols that you are presenting. Direct us and help us to be prepared for the Sabbath. For this, Father, we thank you. For this, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.